and um, you got to find ways to win. Um, this week, you know, we got a great opponent in Wake Forest. They're uh, like 19th in the country, and our coaches poll 17th, so 5 and 0. Coach Claus and his staff have done a fabulous job. Uh, you know, I've been <clears throat> competing against Coach Claus, I think, when the first time when he was at Richmond, he came to App State back in the playoffs. I think it was 07. Um, you know, and ever since then, kind of followed his career. I was at Toledo, he was at Bowling Green, and, um, you know, and of course, when he went to Wake Forest, uh, being right there in the state of North Carolina. So, you know, he's done a great job, man. He, these guys are always well coached. Um, he's done a good job in red starting a lot of players. And you know, to this point in his tenure at Wake, he's been there long enough now to where, you know, he's had to go through a full cycle of recruits. And, you know, those guys are red shirt. They understand their philosophy. They're, they know exactly what they want and to do offensively, defensively, to kick a game. They're a very, very efficient football team. Um, they're not penalized. They take care of the ball. They, you know, the kicking game's good. I think the field goal kicker has not missed the field goal. I mean, just, so just in everything they do, they make you have to go out and win the game. They're not going to give you the game. And, you know, that, that speaks a lot to what their coaching staff's done there and then what their players have been able to do. They uh, have a quarterback that's playing as good as anybody in the country and put up some great numbers this year um, for what he's been able to do. Um, I think he's only lost one game as a starter. I think he started midway season last year and uh, has, has done a phenomenal job. Two wide receivers, and they're so impressive. They make contested catches. They're great you know, in, in traffic. Um, you know, and, and you know, so we know it's going to be a, a huge test for our team to go on the road. Um, yeah, a team that's as hot as anybody in the country right now. But we're excited, looking forward to the challenge. Coach, Wake Forest runs the ball extremely well. They, they run about 200 yards per game. You guys just face a tough challenge at Boston College. It also runs the ball pretty well. Like, what is it about Wake Forest's run game that makes it, just, just from what you see, makes it so difficult to A, defend, and B, like, what's, what's the best way to kind of contain them? Yeah, they're, they're very unique and very different than Boston College. You know, they, they, they're probably, what they're running offensively is, is, I don't know that anybody else in the country is doing it. Um, the way they run their zone read, it's, um, it, it's extremely slow. You know, the quarterback's walking up the ball with the running back, you know, the ball in the, in the pocket of the running back, and then he can pull it and make those throws, or obviously he can hand it off, or the quarterback can run behind him. So it does make it challenging. You have to cover the, the, the receivers because every play is an RPO. You know, they have the ability to throw it out there to any one of those guys, and they're so big, they can post up a corner or a safety and, and be able to make those catches. So you have to contain the wide outs with that, so you, and when you're doing that, your box is limited of what you have in the box, and so therefore these, these running backs and quarterback are able to find these lanes and create yards. And it, it's tough, it's a tough, tough offense to find, to, to defend, because the quarterback, if, he, if he's a good decision maker, which Jamie Newman is, then, then it makes it very difficult. Can you just also just provide maybe an update on the QBs? How is Malik doing? How is Puma doing? Any, any update? Yeah, they're, yeah, they're, 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 you know, Malik uh, practiced yesterday and he's doing fine. He should, you know, he should be fine this week. Um, you know, I would say the status for Puma is probably very similar to last week. You know, it's, it's just a day to day thing. You know, I wish we could give you more. I, you know, um, it, it seems like it's drag, you know, been dragging out, but um, it is what it is. You know, we're treating it as it seems to be getting better every day, but. Um, until he's ready to go, you know, you know we'll, just, we'll just have to hold him out, you know. So that's kind of where we are right now. But, you know, Malik and Evan both are obviously ready to go and should have a big week of practice. Mm -hmm. On Saturday, I was watching ACC Network after all the games, and they mentioned something about the offense. That they said, quote, your offense is built to win shootouts. Mm -hmm. I know you guys have struggled with consistency early, but do you kind of agree with that? Do you see an offense? Well, I'd like to think we are. You know, I don't know that you know, where they got that. I would like to think we are. Um, you know, we, we have some we, – we want to be an offense that has the ability to throw the football and or run the football. So, you know, when we have the lead, we want to be able to run the ball out and, and grind, that, grind that clock and, and, and keep their offense off the field. And then if we're behind, we want to have the ability to go down and score if we have to throw the ball. So we have enough weapons out wide receiver, and, and our running game should be strong enough to be able to do that. So, um, you know, you, you have to be able to close out games. There's no question about it. You have to be a fourth quarter team. Um, you know, you need a good field goal kicker, you know, but because of how close a lot of these games are and what they're going to come down to. And you need to have a good defense. I mean, you know, and, and our defense, you know, gave up some big plays Saturday, but 
that last drive, we did a good enough job and we, we held them out, you know, in the field goal range. And so, you know, it, it takes a complete team effort in order to get wins like that. Scott, back to Newman for a bit. I mean, he's, he, the completion percentage, the, everything's there. But how much of it is his football IQ and intelligence? Because that seems to be off the charts yeah. for him. Yeah, <clears throat> that's what it all comes down to, as we talked about earlier. Um, you know, what I like about quarterbacks, one of the biggest attributes is decision making, and it has to happen within a second. And that's that's why they're good on offense because he makes it all go. You know, you know, if you're an RPO team, you have to read the defense pre-snap, then you have to read it post-snap. And I think that's why the completion percentage is high because if the defense allows you to hit one of those little slants or uh, hits, um, he can see that and he, he makes a throw and it's a completion. So, um, you know, but if you, you got to have that mental capacity to be able to do that. He can, but he's also physically talented. You know, he's got a big arm. He's a big guy. He can run. Um, you know, he, he's, he's a total package, and I think he's playing that way now. With, uh, as far as your quarterbacks are concerned, can you just kind of assess what, after watching the tape, of what Evan did, mm -hmm. and then also, do you call him Malik or Mikhail? Yeah, I'm calling him Malik. I mean, I, you know, but I mean, if he wants me to call him, I can. But, uh, he said Malik's fine, so that's what, that's what I know him as, you know. So, um, I think I think looking back, um, Evan, Evan played really, really good football. Uh, made some big-time throws on third-down scenarios. Um, you know, threw the ball away when he needed to, which was great. Earlier in the year, you know, we were not throwing the ball away. We were taking some sacks, and so we threw the ball away when they were covered. Um, you know, made some great decisions in the run game. You know, the, the one play, the negative play he had was the, the exchange with the fumble there. And, you know, and that could be attributed to the running back and him a little bit both. But um, that was a one negative play. I mean, I thought he played a really good football game. And, and I thought Malik did too. You know, Malik played his best game, maybe his best game of his career. Um, you know, he ran for some first downs, he ran for a touchdown, and then he made some great throws. And if you go back, as we go back and watch the film, there was four other plays. We, I mean, we could have been over a 400 yard day, uh, excuse me, over 500 yard passing day for a couple couple balls. You know, I mean, Tutu had one right in his hands in the end zone. Um, number 18, Justin Marshall had one across the field right in his hands. I mean, I, you know, there's a couple. Fitzpatrick on a third down late in the fourth quarter. You know, it was a high ball, but can make that catch. He'll tell you she made it. So, man, we were. We left a few plays out on the field, and quarterbacks gave the guys an opportunity to make plays, and that's why we asked for this quarterback. As you get to the middle of the season, how do you manage the possibility of preserving some red shirts, and, and how much does that weigh week to week in, in their personnel moves? Yeah, you know, we, that's a good question. You know, we talked about that um, really at the beginning of the season, and you, t and you really assess it as we go through. It's kind of neat where these uh, bye weeks are at because it's 4-4-4. Four, four, and four. And there's been some scenarios where we've played some guys in um, in four games, and now we're kind of holding them back, hoping to try to register. And then there's a couple other guys, um, you know, Dorian Jones is one that we would like to play in four games. You know, he hasn't played yet, but we're going to get him in some four games. We still want to register him. Um, you know, we are very cognizant of where these guys are. So if they're not playing much, and how many games have they played, and then will will they be available? We'd love to have them available at the end. And some of these guys we're we're developing right now. And we're, they're practicing as if they're playing like second team guys on special teams. So when the time comes later on in the season, we'll be able to insert them and feel like we'll get some good play out of them. And plus, they get to play. It gives them experience for you know the next four years and next year. Unrelated question with the uh, Kentucky legislators jumping on board on the NIL issue in California. What do you want them to do, and what do they need to consider from your perspective? You know, I, I really have not – Looked at it very much. I mean, I, I, you know, of course, it's out of my hands, really. Anyway, you know, whatever, whatever laws that come come down, you know, we'll adhere to them and, and do it. I just know that, um, you know, I love, I love college football. I love the way it, collegiate sports, um, amateur sport, uh, people playing for the love of the game. You know, I, uh, I'm a purist in that respect because I just like that feel. I, I like, um, you know, so I, I don't know what's going to happen with this. You know, there's a, it can go in a lot of different ways. I know we've been headed in that direction for many, many years now. Um, and, and so I know something's going to happen. It, it'll, I'm just going to leave that for, in the hands of the lawmakers and see what happens with that. I, I don't, I don't want to touch anything with that. We'll, we'll, we'll see what those rules are and then, and then move forward from there. Coach, now that you have watched some film, looking at your secondary, what did you see that you hope that they can throw before Saturday now that you're going to have a team that's a little bit more known yeah. for passing the ball? Yeah, they can throw the football. One of the best passing teams out there in the country. And, 
you know, a lot of it is, is tightening up the coverage, you know, because if you if you play off of these guys, they're going to make you pay. They'll just they'll throw the underneath all day long, and they'll go right down the field, you know. But then they're also capable of running the football. Some sometimes you look at some of these teams that are, you know, you spread your out throw you throw it all the time type of teams. When they get in the red zone, it's a little more difficult. But these, this team's not that way. This team's built to be able to run the balls well into the red zone. So you have to tighten the coverage down. And that's everybody. That's not just uh, corners. I mean, that's safeties or, or your guys that are on your overhangs, number two guys in the slots. You have to tighten it up on them as well. And, you know, I, I looked at, we obviously looking at Boston College. They played Wake Forest. That was their last game. Boston College defensively did a very good job against Wake Forest, I thought. You know, they, they tightened the coverage down. Wake had to make very good to contested catches. And Boston College did a great job on first and second down against Wake. You know, Wake was 17 for 24 on third down. They're one of the best third down offenses in the country. And, you know, that's where we got to be really good because you got to get off the field. And, but it's all about tightening up coverage. Coach, obviously you have a big day offensively. The first time. You have to be good at time possession. How do you balance that in terms of the big plays you want, but also make sure that defense is too tired? Yeah, you know, we're, we're not, you know, we're a no-huddle team, but we're not per se a tempo team. We can, you know, get that. But I just, we want to try to get the best possible plays. And so we really don't worry about time of possession, but I think when you run the football like we do, you end up eating up some of the clock. You end up, you know, allowing your defense to recover on the sideline and make adjustments before they come back on the field. You know, we're not one of these teams that will go three and out in 30 seconds. You know, I think that's, that's not good team football. You know, so but we want to try to run the ball, be balanced, but I don't necessarily worry about time of possession. It just seems like at the end of the game, you know, we've had the ball longer. You know, and I think that helps our defense. So. I think that's part of team football, and it helps teams win games doing it that way. And that, that's just the way we'll continue to do it. But we don't necessarily think about, hey, we got to have the ball for so long. And you just mentioned Kale probably having his best game of the year. Back-to-back -back games over 280. I mean, when he came into the year, people didn't think he was going to be How much growth have you seen from him from this, when you got here this summer? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, he's, he's gotten a lot better. I think um, he's starting to fully kind of understand our offense now a lot better. Um, it's a pretty simple offense to be a quarterback. It enables them not to think as much and they can just play. Because when you, and then when you can get that run game established, then it's going to allow these guys to get open out here. we got some playmakers outside. So now it's just a matter of getting them the ball. And, and you know, for him, he started to get more comfortable. You know, made some mistakes and some errors in the Florida State game. Um, you know, did a great job of really correcting some of those mistakes. And, again, come out and playing his best game. Um, you know, the receivers had a lot to do with it. O-line had a lot to do with it. So, you know, we we'll, won't we'll put it all on him, but I think, you know, he has some good teammates that play well also. But we're trying to simplify for him and, and allow him to play fast and, and to not have to think as much. So, proud of the way he played. Because you talked about redshirting guys uh, earlier. Um, before all the injury issues, did it ever cross your mind maybe potentially redshirt at the Conley this year? And if so, why right now? Yeah, you know, we, we've thought about it, but then, you know, we, we said, that, you know, there's probably not going to be a scenario where we, where we could redshirt him, you know. And then, if Puma stayed healthy, you know, and the league were healthy, then, then that scenario would still be in play, you know, but, but Puma's been out, you know, he's been out for a month now. And, you know, and, and it just, you just have to have guys that will be able to come in and play. You know, that's why we've been preparing him all through August, all through, you know, September of, hey, you're going to have to play, you're going to have to get in there. And we had an opportunity to play him, you know, in the uh, WKU game, he got in, they played well, and then, of course, I think what I mentioned, you know, after the game was that the bye week is when he gained so much respect from the teammates. And then, you know, and not then I think, you know, it showed on game day this past week, you know, where he's out there, we have to have plays made, and he's a true freshman who made the play. And a lot of credit to him for how hard it works. Let's say that the long pass is, is hypothetically ready to play this week. After what you've seen from the league the last two, two games, how do you evaluate who's going to beat the starter mm -hmm. in your in your opinion? Yeah, I think, you know, it'll go back to – to practice and you know, who's who's got the you know, mentally who's got the best grasp of the game plan and really understands what we're trying to do um, and, and can help our team win. That's who we'll play, you know. And then you know, once you get into a game scenario, if, if whoever's playing is maybe struggling, and it's not so much for me, it's not so much physically, but it's more mental. If you're struggling a little bit mentally, then you know we'll go on to the next guy because I feel good about him, you know. And I think if uh, Puma's healthy and he's got a good grasp on it, then I feel good about him playing. I mean, I, you know, it's just, I think all three guys bring a lot to the table um, of what we're trying to do. And I think we've seen uh, we've seen some good play out of all three of them, you know, and albeit a long time ago for Puma. But it's, uh, you know, but all these guys have made a lot of plays for us. 
Um, you know, so we'll see when that time comes. I hope he becomes available soon. Wake Forest, uh, their offense does a really nice job with ball deception. How do you really work on and sort of, you know, just bring home the, the ball recognition skills that you are going to have to have this week? <clears throat> yeah, they do a really good job with it. You know, it's, um, I, think, I think more so than anything, it's about, you know, doing your job. You know, I can't have my eyes looking into the backfield all the time when I, if I'm supposed to be covering a receiver because next thing you know, they're going to lull you to sleep and he's going to pull it and throw it to that guy and be wide open. So you have to be very disciplined. Um, maybe at times patient to where, you know, you may think, i got to go make a play right here. But no, you need to do your job, stay on your guy. And that's the same thing for linebackers and or D-line. If I need to get to this gap, get to that gap. Don't get out of your gap. Because, you know, we played Wake when I was at App uh, two or three years ago. And it's real easy sometimes when he's riding this guy, that is D-lineman, to think, i got to get over here to get that. But just stay in your gap. Because if you don't, he'll make you pay. Um, so it's about being patient and about staying in your gap and doing your job. And that's what we'll be coaching hard this week. Scott, given where things were when you guys got here, how much of your work and the coach's work has been physical versus mental and trying to build confidence and, and get the guys to the point where they can win a game like they did Saturday? You know, we're just just trying to be consistent. I think from day one when we, were, when we came in here, you know, this is who we are. Here's how we're going to run our program. We're going to hold you accountable. You're going to have, we're going to ask you to do some things maybe that you weren't asked to do before. Um, we're going to ask you to give great effort, and then when you come into the building, have a great attitude. You know, I think that's that's what we've been trying to do. And I think when you do all those things, then you're going to be a good football team. I mean, you can, you know, we haven't talked as much about the X and O part of it. You know, in the off season and in the summer, it's all about giving great effort and coming to work every single day and being consistent. And and that's what these guys. And I think they understand a little bit of the fruit of that of that labor and that hard work. And we got to continue to do that. You know, we're nowhere near where we need to be. Um, you know, we, we got to really clean up a lot of things, and that's that's kind of what we're continuing to strive on, um, and, and really trying to stay in the moment. You know, today, what can we do today to get better? Um, I don't, we don't really sit, step outside, and look at the big picture. We want to stay right now, right here, right now. What we can do to get better, um, and they, they've done a lot better with that. They've, they've gotten a lot better. You know, just trying to really understand what the program's all about, what we need to get to. And I think when you focus on that, then the wins will come. So they're obviously. His expectations for the U.S. coming this year weren't very high. I mean, some people thought you guys might not even win an ACC yeah. game. Obviously, I mean, this chance you really should be probably four and one. Mm -hmm. Do you talk to those guys about raising expectations? I mean, the whole game could possibly, possibly be play. No, not really. You know, we, we when we say expectations, you know, we expect it to be Notre Dame. I mean, that's just our mentality. And so, to me, it's just a daily expectation. Of, of competing every single day. You're competing every single day really against yourself. Like, I need to do better today, you know, as an individual. And when we do that, we'll be better as a team. So, again, we don't really focus on the big picture. Um, you know, we kind of stay right in the moment. And I think when you do that, you know, you just you just do the best you can do today. And, it, and, and that'll be good enough. And I think, you know, I just go, we go back to where when we were at App. You know, we're winning a lot of games, you know, after you win a championship, you know, then you come back the next year. You know, people are, are you supposed to win the championship? We don't even worry about that. We're worrying about right now. And then, then you win another one. You know, then you win another. I think when you start looking at big picture and worrying about all this other stuff, then you lose focus on what really matters. And that what really matters is how, how can I go today? If I need to lift weights today, I need to go as hard as I can in the weight room today. I think you just got to stay in the moment. That, us as coaches and as a staff, that's what we talk about all the time. Focusing on the here and now and focus on the details, that's how you become a championship caliber team. And, you know, you can't look at all the other stuff. Once you start doing that, you lose focus. So we want to focus on the details. Coach, you mentioned earlier that Wake has done a nice job of being able to redshirt. Speaking yeah. of redshirt guys, of redshirting guys, when you were at App the first year, did you redshirt almost everybody? And is that the optimal thing that you would love to do every almost, you know, in a year? You, you know, you, you would like to. Now, the optimal thing to do is if everybody you sign that are ready to come in and play right now. I mean, that means they're really good, you know? So in every class that you bring in, there's going to be a handful of guys where, man, they can help you right now. You know, so put them out there. Let's play them. You know, we know what we're getting out of that freshman. We know we're going to get it for a few more years after that. Um, you know, and with this new rule, which is phenomenal, I love the new rule. It's one of the best things that college football's passed in a number of years. To allow these guys to play a little bit, it keeps them focused throughout the year, knowing that they may be here one day, they're going to get on the field this year, and not just I'm on the shelf, I'm redshirted. It, and it encourages them to continue to work. So once they get on the field now, you know, now they're going to get better. And so 
we want to try to play most of our guys in four games, and we want to try to register a bunch of our guys. But if they're ready to play, then we'll obviously put them in there and play. But it helps your team two years from now, three years from now, because you know you've got these guys one more time. One more, and, that, and all the work that you put in as a player and as a coach, investing in the time of that player, you're going to get back. And I think that's the key. Um, because the one thing you can't coach is experience. And so when you have guys that are fifth-year seniors and they play a lot of ball, they're going to help you win. I mean, there's no question about it. Two guys on defense that were in the middle of a lot of plays. The other day were Hicks, Robert Hicks and Abdullah. What have you seen from those two? And, and it, it seemed like they played more. Yeah, yeah, they did. Um, you know, Abdullah's always had the ability, man, can fast, um, very explosive player. Um, just trying to find a role for him. You know, where can we put him and, you know, kind of put him in that outside linebacker role and, and then Hicks as well. So we kind of moved Hicks. Uh, we kind of moved Hicks around. Really, you go back to the spring. You know, he's inside backer, he's defensive end, and now he's now he's got him an outside backer. You know, to, to Hicks' credit, his he's had so much such a great attitude over the last month, month and a half, and, and, and I think now he's starting to see, man, when you come to work that way, then you're gonna have an opportunity. Um, you know, back earlier, you know, kind of wavering a little bit with his attitude and this and that. Um, really just kind of trying to figure it all out, really, and uh, which is not uncommon for a young person and uh, you know, he's really come around. You know, he's really kind of bought in. He's like, Coach, what can I do to help the team? And we're trying to find ways for him to help the team. So he's on a lot of our special teams now. Uh, we've got him in a role as an outside backer as well. And I think we're going to see his, you know, increase, his role increase with that and probably get more snaps, um, you know, because he has talent. He, he can run, he, you know, he can hit, he can tackle. So there's a lot of things he can do for us. Last one, Tom. And it's good. This is the last one, uh, Coach. Uh, the amount of time between U of L's last ACC win and this one was about the time it takes for an elephant to uh, have a baby. Do you think that the new male elephant at the zoo should be named Scott Satterfield? Mm -hmm. Well, no, I, I don't think it should be named Scott Satterfield. But uh, that's a pretty interesting fact that you brought up. But no, I'm just proud. I'm just happy for our guys. Uh, you know, and I wasn't here. You know, last year. You know, I know I was dreadful for, for a lot of our players, but, uh, you know, for me, uh, this is all I know. You know, we're 3-2, we're and 1-1 one one in ACC, and um, we're looking to get more. We like the taste of winning. And, you know, I think, uh, you know, hopefully this will entice our guys to continue to work even harder and have more detail of every day when they come to work. And, uh, you know, because I'm telling you what, that locker room is fun. I mean, you guys heard them yelling right down the hallway, and I want them to get used to doing that. And, uh, you know, hopefully we'll be yelling a lot. Uh, to what's the at about 11 o'clock Saturday night. All right. All right. Thank you, Jeff.